back to the show. Welcome back to DXB Today. Something of a medical special. We're having a medical today down here uh, on the DXB Today sofas and looking at the innovations into how medicine has, has changed our life at the moment. Next guest is leading the way, a pioneer in robotic surgery. He's uh, helping to revolutionise healthcare with cutting-edge technology and life-saving procedures. A uh, big welcome to Dr Hatem. Uh, Musa has joined us here live in the studio. Adam, lovely to have you with us. Thank you so much for the invitation. Interesting here in there from Brian talking about, you know, we haven't even scratched the surface of the potential of AI when it comes to integration into uh, medicine and the medical world moving forward. When it comes to robotic surgery, is it the same answer there? How, how far advanced has we got with robotic surgery and its potential? Yeah, actually the AI has contributed a lot to the robotic surgery. So it's uh, basically the AI algorithms can um, analyze a large data sets, including uh, medical imaging, uh, uh, patient's history. Uh, that can predict the outcomes after the surgery even, and also can provide planning to the surgeon. So what approach he wants to access uh, the patient's uh, area or the anatomy, and also, uh, surprisingly, that, that, that the AI can track the surgeon's movement in real time and also can provide helping, uh, help on the, uh, assessing the surgeon's movement, whether it's deviation or it's standards, it's as planned. So that's decreasing the human error. Uh, yeah, yeah, the AI is contributing a lot. Yeah. Uh, help in, uh, in the safety and accuracy of the, um, of the surgery, definitely. So you, so you mentioned there that obviously like doctors are still required to do some of the part of the surgery. So how do you go about like training doctors to be able to use um, these robotic surgery tools? Is it haptics that they're using or? Yeah, this is a very, very, very good question because now the, the, the new technologies is helping us with the haptic feedback. Yeah. Now the robot initially, the, the, the only drawback or part of the challenge is that you don't, you lose the tactile feeling. Mm -hmm. So like when you do laparoscopic surgery using your arms and then now use a robot, you don't feel. So now they have these technologies helping out the surgeon to feel how much pressure, how much pulling on tissues he has. So this has been implemented in many robots uh, nowadays that's helping a lot. So training is a very, very um, important and essential aspect of training. And this part of the question that you have to answer before you start a program. So training, what about your training? So do, are you providing good training to, to, to the surgeons? So it goes through the online modules and then simulators. You have to pass certain uh, modules first and then you go to a dry box where we have like a box that you can just train uh, dry, not mm. like live in tissues. Mm. And then you go to cadaver and then you go to like um, proctoring by another experience and then to go through a certain so long list of, uh, of steps Dr. that Hatton, you have to that you have to go first you're training you're doing training international students at, at your hospital aren't you absolutely Which I found really interesting absolutely absolutely we uh, we sponsor a lot of uh, surgeons coming from South Africa from the Gulf area even from from the Middle East as well to come to our program to get full training and we have a full infrastructure of that robotic trainings and we provide this actually our passion we mm -hmm. don't charge you we just want to expand the service to, to all the uh, wow. people around just to, yeah, yeah. So this is what we do in our hospitals. Mm. Uh, Dr. Hazem, I have to jump in here because when we're talking about a robot potentially doing a surgery, I'm going to be honest when I say it scares me. You know, where, where is the, the trust element in this? Where is the, or the safety precautions that are taken to <coughs> ensure it is done in a safe manner? Yeah, we started this robotic program five years ago, okay, and this is the misconception people have that the robot is doing the surgery. Mm -hmm. The robotic system is just to help the surgeon performing the surgery. It's not doing the surgery on its own, it's just following the surgeon's order to do a better service, basically, as simple as it is. So it helps with the accuracy, with dexterity, with the, with the precision. Just imagine that the robotic camera provides 10 times magnification than normal eyes can see and the 3D perception. So as if the surgeon is sitting inside with his head seeing 10 times more than the surgeon, than the normal eyes can see. And the instruments are so delicate and tiny, it's articulated in 360 degrees, all this controlled by the surgeon. So the surgeon is the one who's the master. He's the one who's controlling every single movement for, for that procedure. So we, you got this question a lot before that, oh, I don't want the robot to perform surgery on me. And I'm, it's not the robot, it's the surgeon, but it's not more technology. It's more advanced technique and technology helping providing a better service 
to the patient, especially in narrow areas like in the pelvis or up in the esophagus area. So this definitely, these areas were very difficult to approach initially before the era of robotic surgery. Glad we cleared that up. <laughs> so it is not. It is not the robot. It's the surgeon who's used. It's a, a surgical tool. Yeah. So the surgeons use a very advanced, high technology yeah. surgical tools. So that's all. Dr. Hatem, I was first introduced to robotic surgery 15 years ago in Asia. We talked about that yeah, before yeah. the show. And you've been practicing in Florida for the past 20 years. Robotic surgery. How prevalent is there? Where are we now in this region, in the UAE, and what do you see to be mm. the future? And comparing that to. Uh, we, are, we are a little late, but we are catching up significantly. Now we are um, adopting the, all the, most of the robotic uh, uh, platforms available now. Even we provide robotic surgery in soft tissue, in orthopedics, and neurospine, and in uh, all the subspecialties. We're trying to to adopt this new technology, and I think we are getting there. I mean, we are we are getting into that uh, that high uh, technology, high, high, you know, even the AI actually working on this as well. So we are, we are late, but we are catching up. Mm. Dr. Quickly. Hassan, I already feel at ease with a lot of the questions that you have answered okay, here today. Good. So that's I want to thank I'm you glad. so much for, for joining us <laughs> here you. today. Learning, always learning. Always learning. It's, it's phenomenal.